Hi everyone, my name's Lou Sims and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to do a little bit of pattern building and I've chosen my shady designs a little bit on the side collection to build up some designs. What I want to do though is I just want to make a really quick background um, with some distress inks because I want quite a watery one. Um, and I'm just using Salty Ocean and I'm going to use a little bit of Peacock feathers and I'm just gonna well I was gonna spritz it if I can get my uh, lid off and I just want a little bit of a subtle background if this is too much I'll turn the card over and I'll make an even subtler one no that's be okay for what I want and there's obviously some other color on my mat as well let's give that a quick dry Right, let's just dab a little bit more in places. And I'll just give that a quick dry. Let's grab. Now, I thought what I'd do is actually stamp with these and um, maybe colour in. But, but I'm not sure because they've got. Um, so I'm rustling as I get stamp blocks because. That was the one thing I didn't get out as well. Because they've got um, their pigment base with the, the mica built into them, once that ink is dry, it should then, um, I can then watercolour so I can create all the different backgrounds. So, got my piece there. Now I'm going to work off centre and I decided I'm going to go for I'm not sure if I'm going to go for the ultramarine or the indigo. I'm going out my comfort zone. I'm going to use a little bit of purple. It's not my normal colours that I go to. Now, the, the inks have a um, like a foam pad to them, not a felt pad. So you don't really need to press hard with them to get all the, the different, um, to get the colour out. And I love the little metal tins. I think they're just cool. So we're just going to start, and I'm going to start slightly off centre with them. Because that takes the pressure away of trying to get it in the centre. If I wanted to get in the centre, I could have just grabbed a ruler and done um, some diagonal lines and that would have found the centre for me. But I thought it'd be nice to just do it off centre. So the inks, when they stamp, you're not going to really see the pearlescent sheen on there based on the, the actual stamp itself. So... I'm just going to clean them off just in case I want to use that one again. And I'm just going to grab this one. And I think, uh, you know, we go, which one should we do? No, let's do this one in purple. Let's go alternative ways. So we'll do this one in the slightly purple colour. And that's why I've done the background I have. I should put a little bit more on and not stick my fingers in. It would be a good idea. So I'm just going to do some pattern building with the stamps. And like I said, because they're pigment, it means I'll be able to colour them out with the same ink. So I'm just, I'm going to start um, with the four points to begin with. And then I can colour or fill in any of the gaps. I just find from my head that works the best way. But that's just my how I work. Right, so we've got that there. And because the stamps are hand drawn, it doesn't really matter if you're not a hundred percent accurate with your stamping. And that takes a little bit of pressure off. So I've got the basis of that pattern there. So let's now do, let's go back to the blue. So I'm going to stick to the same two for the moment. And I'm going to go with the blue one here. And I'm just going to go in between the two pieces there. 
and build up my actual pattern. There we go. So it's going to be hard to see on the background, but once we add the colour and colour them in, now I've smudged that, but that's fine. We'll make a, a feature of it. Oh, no, I haven't. It's from the background. Either way, we'd make a feature of it. It wouldn't matter. So I've got that one there. I'm just going to clean that stamp off. And I didn't just clean that one off. And I'm going to do final. The only reason I'm cleaning them off is just in case I use them with an oxide or something like that. I don't want to um, contaminate them. I don't know why I've got so many blocks out either. I always have this vision that I'll put a different stamp on a block and I end up using the same block. But hey. Right, so I'm just going to add the final one in there and I'm essentially just plugging the gaps I don't want the pattern I want the pattern to be quite quick um, and I want it to be you know you don't have to overthink it if you do you do but it doesn't matter and if it doesn't quite line up oh I've missed one there so I'll have to do that in a minute um, as I always say, that's what a micron pen's for, or a jelly roll. Right, so I did miss one. Let's put you back on there. And that's going to go in between there. Right. And I'll lift it up so you can see, and we'll see if we can see the... The pearl from it because obviously with the background it's going to be hard to see that all from there right and the last one one more going in there there we go let's just clean that last bit off i'll keep the stamps out just in case so that's so that's my quick pattern um and i'm hoping you can see some of the pearlescent of the ink coming through um, so that way now I've got my background. So I'm just going to add a little bit of colour. So we'll move the stamp block, the, the pink mat out of the way because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to try and sit down again. Right, I'm going to use a water brush this time around. And I'm just going to add, I'm just going to put a little bit of the actual uh, Pearl Fusion because it's a pigment. It's, um, you wouldn't normally watercolour with it. Now you're not going to get true blendability um, as in like proper watercolour because it's obviously an opaque nature but it gives I think that's really quite nice as well so I'm just going to make sure my water brush isn't just leaking too much water and I so now it's like it's making um, a like a pearlescent paint with it But it will be, it won't be as truly opaque as the original ink was if I was going to stamp with the original ink. But it gives a lovely luster. And because, like I said, it what well, it is pigment, it means my outlines aren't going to fade. Should add a little bit more there. And I can go over it. And I've got the outline still of my stamping there because of the pigment side of it because it makes it the permanent
looking to see if there's anywhere I want to make it slightly darker. I do want to make it a bit darker there. And at the bottom in places. And because I'm watercolouring it out, it might then become semi-opaque and I can see a little bit of my background in. Right, so, I'm stand up, see if you can see the pearl finish. So I'm hoping the camera might be able to pick up the pearl effect and, and the difference that you're getting and that's, you know, just using two of the colours. Right, so we're just gonna, I'm just going to add now, go around. And the create, and as I said, I like the idea that they're, they're not, I think if you're going to watercolour with things like this, it doesn't matter then about your blending. It doesn't matter if something's lighter or darker. I've got the purple on there so I'm just going to look rather than waste the ink I've got here if there's any areas I want to make it slightly darker so now just by adding that one on hoping you can actually see that one way it looks really quite flat but then when you tilt it or tilt it to the light or look at it in a different way so you can see the difference you know and so you it looks quite um solid um looking straight on it but then you you can pick up all the differences all the subtleties um of the light right where's my I want, i've got a super thin brush somewhere it's not that one I'll stick to this one and just make. So I'm going to use the blue and we can. Let's do the centre here. I've got a, now a mixture of the purple and the blue there quite like that actually that looks quite nice right so I'm just gonna use up some of the blue and fill up areas that I've got So I've got that now going, so that's like the centre going like that. I do like that. That looks quite cool. So I'm going to, might as well, no I'm not, I'm going to leave that. Right, let's give that a quick blast. Right, so we've got here, so I'm just going to add a little bit of white in places. 
I just hope this is dry enough. Have I picked up a or a glaze? No, I think. I think I've. Doesn't matter if I've gone for a glaze because it'll dry white anyhow. So I'm just going to pick up some of the detail in the stamp. And put some right there and where these details were originally in the stamp, I'm just going over them with the white. Okay. There we go. I've got that there. And then I'm just going to carry on from that line there and I can add some white into these dots here. So I've got my pattern going. I'm just looking at an angle to see if I've covered everything. So I've got my pattern going like that in all over the place. So I'm quite happy about that. Right, I'm going to grab, I want to do, um, I think I'm going to go sparkle, but I don't know what, let's have a go. I'm going to go for a lighter sparkle. I just, want to add a little bit of contrast in places and just keep the pattern going also if your coloring isn't you know in your eyes spot on just adding a little bit of definition in different places tricks your eye into believing that everything is you know spot on right because you'll put a few dots in the center there and once they're dry, I'll add a few white on the top of it. So I've got that going there. So I've got a little bit of... And I'm now thinking, you know, you know, you know when you go, ooh, stop, Louise, otherwise you're going to be sitting here forever adding little bits. And then I just want to grab a purple. Right, let's do sparkle as well. And I can add... I'm just going to put that between the white dots. And then we can do it there. Yeah. I'd be lost without my jelly rolls. I must admit, they, they cover so many bloopers that I've done in the past. And I'm not an overly glitz person, i.e., glitter um so these sort of things like the inks and everything like that just help me uh not overcome that fear make you feel like oh, i'm doing something a little bit more sparkly but it's a little bit con more controlled so we've got that there and then 
let's just do a little bit there on the edge just to tie those bits in and where some of them don't join it doesn't matter so much we've got those there and I'm just going to grab my pen again uh, and just add a few white dots to break up the blue so I've just done the center there okay that's finished I think I'm going to call that finished with my coloring that now is the pattern all built up so you can see the pearl from the inks it just looks wonderful I just think it's nice you know it's a complete contrast so then what I would do is I'm just going to mount it onto a plain white card and I would just choose a simple sentiment just to go on there um, and that and I would leave it as simply as that so it actually all works together now I have done another version of it and this time the outlines I've done in black and I've coloured with the pearl fusion inks on top of an acrylic background so that's a jelly plate print um, and they look so that's the same color blue that I've actually used in that one and it looks completely different choosing sentiments I want to go on things um, I have to live with projects for a while um, I don't know why but I do um, and then I can think of a sentiment or something that I think will actually work with it okay this is an added extra end to the video I know I said that I like to go away and live with my projects and you know add the sentiments but when I was editing this video and ideas came to me straight away so I had to stop editing and and just finish the cards so I'm just showing you what I did in the end so this was the card that um, I made in the video and what I've done now is I've cut the panel down I've added a few gems and sequins which is showing there and I've turned it into a um, five by five square card and I love it I've got the sentiment on there straight away so I have finished that and mounted it and turned it into a card now inspired by that made me think what would the design look like if I stamped it in black ink so I then went ahead and did that and this is now what it looks like in black if I bring the other one in you can see quickly and I've just extended the design by add, adding these and these again. But I've stuck to exactly the same colours as I did for my first one. I've added a few sequins on just to add a little bit more. As you can see, and this now makes a 6x6 six six card. So it's the black outline stands out a little bit more than the other outline. But I love both of them equally. Uh, and I love the fact that I've managed to extend the pattern even more now the other contrast card I shared I did go off and I turned that into a card so I've done simple matte and layers and I've added my sentiment and I've just added a few little sequins again do love a sequin or two um, but I just wanted to show that by editing the video I did go off and finish them and I just had to so they're the three cards now that I made from the same one idea thanks ever so much for watching and tuning in if new to my channel would absolutely love it if you hit subscribe um, there's more photographs and everything like that over on my blog if you want to see um, any more detail and everything is listed below until next time take care everyone bye